I'm Joe. Thank you for watching this video. This video is from a series we're calling Stories from the Mouth of the Columbia River. We hope you enjoy this video and will like and subscribe. One of the roles that the DPM plays is for external relationships. And, and I would like to just take a minute to talk a little bit about a, a Corvette, what I called my uh, USACE, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, my USACE 101 or Core 101 briefing. Because, because often, although I'm talking a few minutes ago about the pride that we have and how the district has responded through the years, um, it, one of the things that also happens is that um, First of all, the nation doesn't know. It, you know, a lot of times the core is below the radar unless someone doesn't like something. And, and then we're in the newspaper normally for the bad. And one of the things the core has always struggled with is how do we get our story out? How do we tell the story? When I was in the role, and, and my view is that's, that's hard to do. We have a great public uh, affairs office that shares information and gets it out and shares positive stories when we can. Um, However, when you look at the Corps of Engineers and what's known as our Civil Works Program, uh, it's very difficult for the word to get out. And, and, and let me explain. So I'm going to start with a Corps of Engineers 101, my Corps 101 from the high, high level down. As I mentioned earlier, there's like 45-ish districts around the world. Districts are assigned one or more of four general missions. One mission is to be military support. One is what's called civil works, and I'll come back to that. One is called environmental, which is more HTRW, hazardous toxic radiological waste. So it's cleanup of bad sites, of, of things. And the fourth mission is called IIS, interagency and international support. Uh, support to other agencies, like the Veterans Administration. Okay, so when you look at the 45 districts around the world, um, you have one or more of those missions. In Portland, Portland does not do military construction or military work. Military is what you thought it is. If there's, if, if uh, Lewis McCord uh, um, needs, needs construction of a barracks, that's the military district. Portland district does not do that. Portland is a, primarily a civil works district. We don't do environmental, HTRW. We do have some interagency support. For instance, in Portland, the VA hospital that's up on top of the hill in Portland is gonna be renovated for seismic work. There's a whole bunch, so there's Portland district is doing that support to the Veterans Administration. But primarily, Portland district is a civil works district. When you look across the nation, um, all of the civil works districts that there are um, have the missions of. The civil works mission includes providing for navigation on federal waterways, provides for flood risk management, so how do you reduce the risks of flood, provides for hydropower production, provides for water supply, how do we ensure, you know, allow people with, for water that's dammed up to have water supply. It provides for um, environmental work in Pacific Northwest fish is really big for environmental work. We have a regulatory program where we respond to and enforce environmental regulations. And we have an emergency response. So when Mount St. Helens blew in 1980, the Portland District had an emergency response to reopen the Columbia River. So those are all those missions, navigation, hydropower, fish, are part of a civil works program. So it's all related to our nation's waterways. So wherever we have the national waterways, the Corps has responsibility for those um, uh, primary mission areas. So therefore, when you look at the 45 districts, if you will, 40 some districts, all of them that have civil works as one of their missions, the organization is based on watersheds. And so in the Portland district, or I'm sorry, for, so Portland district is part of the Northwestern Division. When you look at Northwestern Division, the Lewis and Clark Trail, the Missouri River and the Columbia, 
that is part of Northwestern Division. So the organization is based on those watersheds. But basically, NW, Northwestern Division, NWD, calls themselves the Lewis and Clark Division because the whole Lewis and Clark trip is, is included within the footprint. So the Missouri Basin, the Columbia Basin. So there are five districts in Northwestern Division. There's Omaha and Kansas City on the, for, the, uh, for the Missouri River. Um, if I said the Omaha River before, I meant Missouri River, for the Missouri River. And then for the Columbia River, you have a district in Portland, Seattle, and Walla Walla. The Portland district area, again, based on a watershed, it covers most of Oregon. It does not cover the south, the Klamath Basin, because the water in Klamath Basin flows south towards San Francisco. But the Portland District does cover Southwest Washington because that's part of the Columbia watershed area. Therefore, the Portland District has the mouth, has Mount St. Helens, which is in the Columbia Basin. And so that's, and, but what Portland District does not cover Eastern Oregon because the water flows to the east into the Snake River Basin. So therefore, Civil Works boundaries are based um, on watersheds. So with that kind of being the setting and what the Civil Works mission is, navigation, hydropower, flood risk, et cetera, um, an important thing to know, when, when you think of those missions, those missions are not mutually supportive. If you think of a dam, for instance, a dam could be holding back water so you don't have floods, but then the downside is it has impacts environmentally on fish. So therefore, if you have it there, you know, you're providing the benefit for flood, but you also have to mitigate for fish. If you're running water through a generator, okay, you're running it through a generator, you're not holding it back for flood. Um, so the, just the missions of the core are diametrically, you know, they're at odds. And so therefore, when you go back to the Civil Works program, it's very hard to get the good stories out because if an interest group is only interested in fish, only interested in hydropower, only interested in navigation, there's going to be conflicts as the core is at that center balance, trying to balance all of those things. And so one of the things that I often said was to the district, um, one of the messages was we are at that honored position of being in the middle. So it's very hard to get out just only positive because there are negatives. I mean, you're balancing these things and we're at that honored position of being in the middle. And, and that's one of the challenges of the Civil Works pro, uh, program that the, the Corps has. So with that as a little bit of a background, one other background that, that people don't realize is that for federal agencies to be able to do their mission, there's two things that, that you need. You need it from Congress. You need to have authorities. So you need to have authorization for a mission. You also then need appropriations. You need the dollars. And, and an interesting thing about the way, so for instance, way oversimplified, but Department of Defense, you have the authority, Department of Defense, to fight and win our wars. You have to provide us. That's pretty wide flexibility of what, you know, how you do that. Now that's way oversimplified. One of the things about the way that the core civil works program is authorized and appropriated is as our nation developed, it's by separate project. So back in the late 1890s, the Portland district received the authority to build a jetty system for the purposes of helping train the mouth. And we received the appropriations, the dollars, to build it. So the mouth of the Columbia is a separate project. And so when we look at this year, if we want to do dredging at the mouth, we have got to get money appropriated to the mouth of, uh, of the Columbia. Well, if you look at the Portland District map, there are like 26 dams. You go up and down the Oregon coast, there are, I think, like 23 harbors, um, as you look at the district map. And each one of those has a separate authority because as the nation developed, we now need to build a dam at Bonneville in the 1930s. 
Then in the 50s and 60s and 70s, we built um, the Dalles and John Day. Um, the, in the Willamette Valley, there are 13 dams that were built all at different times. When they receive their authorities and appropriations, they're all different. So it's very fascinating. You can go, the, the way that the core Civil Works program, it is not, we are not told what you can't do. We are only told what you are authorized to do. And if you don't have the authority, so if you go in the Willamette Valley, for instance, some of the dams are authorized for fish, some are not. So if you don't have that authority, you can't design fish passage, for instance. Um, and so, so when you, so that's the first step is the, what does the authority tell you you can do? Then the second piece is, what is the appropriation? And every project is appropriated separately. So again, if you think of the complexities of it, the numbers I was given rough, you know, I think it's 26 dams and, or, or 23 harbors and 26 dams. And, and you look at the, e and each one has a separate appropriation. So every year, there may be projects, like for instance, in the Astoria area, there is a federal authorized project to maintain the Skippin' on Channel. That project does not get funding every year. So if we don't get the funding, although we have the authority to take care of Skippin' on Channel, we do not get the appropriations for it, we can't go in and dredge it. Um, in the, in the, uh, the greater mouth area, uh, Iwako, the port of Iwako, there is a channel that goes back to the port of Iwako. It's called Baker Bay is the, the title. We have the authority to maintain a channel to a certain depth, certain width. That's what the authority is. We don't get appropriations every year. And so therefore, if you don't get appropriations, you can't go and dredge it. So when you think of the complexity of, first of all, you're balancing navigation, hydropower, fish, you're balancing the conflicting needs of how our nation uses the water, then you have to get a separate appropriation to actually do. It just, it's just a very complicated world. And to navigate that world to, for the benefit of the, the public is a fun and a neat, neat mission that the district has. But you have to have a thick skin because you're not going to get out, you know, there's not going to be everyone's always going to be rah, 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 because um, we used to, I used to tease that the Corps of Engineers flag is red, right, with a white castle. Well, red to a bull, you know, there are some people that see that red and, and, uh, and that's what it is. It's red to a bull, no matter what good we do. But it's a complicated world that people don't understand um, as far as how the core civil works program works. So that's kind of a just, I'm sorry, a little bit longer than probably needed, but to give a setting of the stage of the world that we live in and, and why things are sometimes work, don't work. And, and so when you think of the jetties, when you think of the annual dredging, when you think of the requirements, it's, it's tied to what do we get appropriations wise and what are our authorities that we have that we can or cannot accomplish work. The way the process works is we prepare, the district prepares for every one of our projects, we prepare a proposed budget. We need X amount of dollars to dredge Skippin' On. Skippin' On Channel does not need to be dredged every year. It may be every 10 years. So therefore, you know, when, it, when we're watching it and our engineers are looking, saying, you know what, because you have to think two years ahead because of the budget process, um, we need skipping on in 2027. So therefore we know how much we will need and we put that in a proposed budget. So the districts consolidate for all of our projects what we think the need will be in a certain year. And then that gets consolidated and then the administration then prioritizes and sends a budget over to Congress. So that's the budget that you always hear in February where it's dead on arrival, right? And, and it's, it's so very interesting um, that the, the neat position of us, of the district being in the middle, is that we prepare our best engineering estimates as to what the needs are. And then we submit that and then the administration decides on what they're gonna to submit to Congress. And then Congress decides what they're gonna add or subtract to that. 
Um, and then at, once there's finally a bill passed, then we know what we actually have. So we do have influence. We give our best engineering judgment to the national decision-making process, but that is between the administration and Congress to decide what is actually funded. And then once they actually fund us, then we, have, then we get to do that work. Once we get into the execution year, um, there is very little, we don't have a lot of flexibility of shifting monies. Um, unless there's, there's certain, you can go through steps to notify Congress if you have to for emergencies, but in general, there's very limited ability to shift between projects uh, as we go through a year. So there's kind of three phases to the budget um, cycle. One is the preparation of our budget. The second phase is the defending of it, because what happens is when the president um, sends over a proposed budget to Congress, normally in February time frame, then between February and October, October is when there's supposed to be a bill passed, we have to defend it. We're asked questions, we're asked from um, every year, I would go back to DC, the Colonel would go back to DC, we would talk to members of Congress um, from all parties who have interest in projects, and we would, our mission would be to say, um, using Skipping on Channel again as an example, in this, in fiscal year X, we don't believe there will be a need there. But if you, or we, or the answer is we do believe there will be a need and it, we think it will cost X dollars. Um, and then we give that information to the, the members of Congress, then they can decide whether or not they're going to fight for that money. And then Congress decides whether or not the money is actually appropriated. So that process, we play in it. We also, also what's interesting is um, as the administration, we have a responsibility. We work for the administration. A red or blue, we work for the administration. We work for the prioritization of the administration. And they put together the budget, and we have to, we have to recognize that. We give the administration our best engineering estimate, and then the administration decides. Um, but we also then have to share that same information that we provide, as far as engineering judgment, to Congress so they can make decisions. We also provide it to stakeholders, you know, whether they be ports, whether they be um, associations like the Pacific Northwest Waterways Association is a wonderful organization from Kevin's perspective because they pull together ports and interests in the navigation system. They pull them together to try to help prioritize what they, what the industry wants. And they then can lobby. We can't lobby. We can share information. We, we don't lobby. But they can lobby if they want. Our role is to make sure that everyone has the same information. So if we think it's going to cost $10 to do some, that we tell the administration we can do the work for $10, um, we will say to the stakeholders, to the ports and, and, and associations, it costs $10, and we will tell the Congress it costs $10. Then it's up to the national decision-making to decide whether or not we spend that $10. Uh, but our job is to make sure everyone has the same information of how much and what would we do with that $10 as part of the process. So, so we are part of it. We would go back to DC and we would share with stakeholders 26 page spreadsheet of every one of those projects. Because if you look at a map, if you look at all of our projects, um, every one of those projects would include what our estimated cost is, what we would accomplish with it, and then the political process will decide and the nation will then decide whether or not we get funded. So that's kind of, so we are part of the process um, we're not the decision makers though, of course. You are always working three budget years at one time. You are executing the current year, so it's a fiscal year, October 1st through September. So you're executing the current year, uh, making sure you spend and use the monies that you were appropriated. You are defending the next fiscal year. So right now, since we're you know, in October, we don't have a budget yet. We're still defending the FY24, but we're executing the FY fiscal year 23 budget. We're defending the FY24 budget. And we're also starting now to prepare the FY25 budget because in the April, May timeframe, we start submitting 
our budgets. So you're always working three budget years at one time. Uh, the furthest out is you're, you're thinking for two years from two years out is the time frame. So that spreadsheet that I was telling you about, 26 pages with all of our projects and what we would do, it includes what we had last year, what we have this year, what we're defending for next year, and what we're, so that it has several columns as you're trying to tell the story. So when we get into talking about the jetties and, and the work that was done that has just finished, has been finishing up in the last couple of years, that's been ongoing for 15 years as far as the budgetary process, trying to get the system, you know, trying to become part of this national decision-making process. What was more important to me was were we trusted? Are we trusted? Are we trusted by those that are involved and know? Are we trusted by the administration, the Corps of Engineers, up through the administration? Are we trusted by our congressional delegation? Do they trust what we're gonna tell them that we're giving them solid advice and information? Do the stakeholders, do they trust us? Do they know what we're doing, that we're gonna do what we say we're gonna do? And if they trust us and they know the system is gonna work and we have to work within the system to, to meet the needs. But as long as they understand and we're trusted, then we're okay because, because they're the ones who know and they're the ones who've got to. And, and that's who we're, we're, we are responsible for. We're responsible to the nation as represented by the administration, the Congress, the users. And that's what we have to, that's what was, what was important. Thank you for watching this video. We hope that it was uh, interesting to you. And if it sparked in any way thoughts you may have about stories from your family or friends or anyone, we'd love for you to make connection with us. Go to our website at tamingthemouth.com and click on the contact button. And we look forward to hearing from you.